Hey everybody, welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and I've got a great project for you today. If you are new though, if you could hit that subscribe button, give me a like, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so today we are going to make a B tiered tray. It's the large one, it's my big three tiered tray and my first project for that is called a B skep. Some people call it a beehive, but I guess it's like a house that's built for bees to live in. And you will see how, what it looks like. I'm going to use this rope from the Dollar Tree <clears throat> to make the skep and just one of the little metal buckets from the Dollar Tree. This just happens to be a spring one that I had laying around. It can be anything. It could be an upside down pot. I'm just using it for the structure. I'm gonna cut off a little loop here. A lot of the skeps that I saw online um, actually have handles on the top. So I'm gonna make just a little handle for the top with the rope. And this rope from the Dollar Tree, there's two um, kinds that are very similar. This is the uh, wider one. I actually had both and I thought the wider one would look a little bit better, but honestly, you could even use twine. It would take a lot longer. I thought the larger diameter of the rope is gonna make this a little bit easier and actually make it a little bit more authentic. So reloading my hot glue gun there, got my loop attached to the top of, or the bottom of my little bucket. And I am ready to start hot gluing. So I'm off frame a little bit there, but all I'm doing is starting my rope there's little tape pieces on the end. I like to cut those off just because I don't want to really mess with the tape. And I could just glue that to the very bottom of the base. And I am going to glue all the way around. Now, normally when I you know wrap things in twine and stuff like that, I only glue like the first row. On this project, I really wanted it to um, be wrapped tightly and not only glued to the bucket, but kind of glued to each other um, because I don't want that floral print to show through. So I glue every single bit of this bucket. I just keep going around. I could do about <clears throat> a half of the bucket and then glue that down before it got hard. If you're, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're wondering where I got this hot glue gun, I got it at um, Amazon, and it is a Ry Ryobi um, hot glue gun. It is cordless. It runs on the Ryobi batteries, and I love it, but it that glue gets really hot, so definitely be careful. And I have hit the end of my rope, so I cut off that little tape, and I am just making sure I got that good and glued down. It's pretty easy to start and stop a new um, package of this rope. The transition is hardly noticeable if you get it glued in good and tight together. And I am just continuing with my second package of rope. Now that I've gotten to the top, I don't really want it to have a flat roof. I want it to be more domed. And so what I'm gonna do here is I am just gluing it to itself and kind of going in a little bit each time I go around to give it more of a domed top. And I'm just gonna go until it is closed, the hole is closed there at the top with the handle sticking out. And that should be enough rope right there. So I am going to measure it, cut it, and glue the top. These little <clears throat> pink things you see me wearing on my fingers are the little hot glue protectors that you get at the Dollar Tree and they are helpful. This hot glue is very hot and so you can still feel it. Here I'm being just like a pyro, going over it with a lighter. Basically that just burns off all the extra fibers on there and cleans it up. Okay, I'm going to use my Cricut to cut some black vinyl here to make an opening for the skep. I notice a lot of people when they make them um, make a little black circle and then they um, put rope around it. So that is my plan here. 
and here is I just did a two inch circle of black vinyl and I put it on there and I didn't like it I didn't think it looked very good so I go and I get on Google and I'm like what does a bee scalp like really look like and instead of a circle they actually have like a slit for the bees to go in and out and so I'm gonna try again and this time I'm gonna do a rectangle here and it's about the same width as one of the ropes. It fit on there pretty nicely. And then I'm just going to use my hot glue gun to kind of melt that onto the rope because, you know, the vinyl is not really going to want to stick to the fuzzy rope. And I'm just making sure that it is good and done. And there is my bee scap. Okay. So I thought it was done, and then I thought about where it was going to be. And the only place it's really going to fit on my tear tray is on the top. But the top of my tear tray actually has a pole that sticks up. And so I want to center it and put it on there, but it is not tall enough. So I thought it was done, but I'm not. I need another at least two inches of height on my B-skip. So I opened a third package of the rope from the Dollar Tree. Whenever I see this stuff, I grab three or four packages of each kind because you're going to need more than one usually for most projects. And you want to be uniform and use the same kind as well. So now I don't have any structure there at the bottom. So what you see me doing is I am just gluing the rope to itself. I'm trying to be kind of careful because I'm kind of having to shape the structure I'm kind of working my way out a little bit, like opposite of what I did on the top, but not too much. And just kind of stacking the rope until I get that extra two inches of height that I need. And I'm glad that I went and measured this because there was nowhere else on the tear tray that this big B skep is going to fit. You could always make this smaller by using like those little um, clay pots from the Dollar Tree and turning those upside down and getting a smaller skip, but I really wanted a nice big B skip <laughs> for my tear tray. And what I'm going to do is I am just going to keep hot gluing around until I just go ahead and use the rest of the row. And I'm just cutting the tape off the end. And this gave me a good, like, another two and a half inches of height. And it holds up pretty well. The rope glued to itself gave me enough structure, even though there is no bucket inside that part. And it turned out pretty good. So I am measuring and gluing the end on. And I'm just kind of like, it's kind of malleable, just kind of shaping it into um, how I like. And then I'm just going to go with the lighter and burn off all the extra strings this step is totally optional, but I like that way it makes it look. Okay, so I am just shaping a little more. I noticed that the rim made it stick out a little bit, but we're all good. Okay, next project is our bee gnome. So what you see there is a mop head a bee skirt from the toy department at Dollar Tree, the mop head was from the Dollar Tree, a doll from the Dollar Tree, a bee headband from the toy section at the Dollar Tree, um, white socks from the Dollar Tree, men's socks, and black men's socks from the Dollar Tree, and some of the OxyClean from the Dollar Tree. So this is just a white men's sock from the Dollar Tree, and I am just going to cut the leg part off of that because I know I won't need that. And I just need some weight for the bottom to make the gnome stand up. You can use like rice or beans, um, whatever you have that's heavy. This was like the cheapest option for me. It was only a dollar and I didn't really want any food in my gnome. I live in Florida. I don't really want any pests or bugs, you know, to be attracted um, to whatever I put in there. And it smells nice. So this is just polyfill from an old pillow. Um, I like to recycle those instead of just buying polyfill. You might as well. So I am just 
stuffing the sock to make my little gnome body. I'm kind of measuring the wings to see how tall I want him. I don't want him too tall because he's going on a tear tray. I probably should have used like a kid's sock because this actually made him kind of short and stout, but that's okay. He's my little chubby gnome. And here I just have floral wire and I am just using that to tie off my um, sock. And it's a good sturdy way to tie it off, but you could use anything, rubber bands, twine, whatever you got. Then I'm just gonna cut off the extra sock at the top. And there is my little gnomey body. Okay, so he needs a nose. So I'm going to use these rubber bands from the Dollar Tree and I am going to just pinch a circle of fluff and put the rubber band around there to give my little gnome a nose. These rubber bands, you get a million in a package, but they're super cheap. So I'm also gonna go around the nose with the floral wire to make um, it a little bit more permanent in case that rubber band does break, that my nose stays put. So just like the top, just gonna wrap it around with the floral wire and hide the wires on the side. Okay, up next is the gnome makeover. I'm just using a blush brush and some of my bronzer and I'm giving the gnome a tan on his nose because I want that part's gonna be visible. That's the only part of the white sock that's gonna be visible and I want it to be flesh colored for my gnome. So blush, anything you can do to give it some color. And then this is the men's black socks from the Dollar Tree and I am going to use that for the gnome body. And I'm just sliding it on from the bottom and I want its nose to stick out, but my sock is a little too big. So I've done this before with socks like ankle socks and I didn't really have all this excess fabric, but since this sock is a full tall sock, I am having to do some trimming here. So I want the sock to go all the way up to his nose and then I am just cutting off some extra fabric and I also want to cover up like where his eye area would be with the black sock. And so what I'm going to do is just use some hot glue and glue the sock to the inner sock. And I got some hot glue on the sock and I'm just trying to clean that up. And the first time it didn't really stick. So I am trying again. Get that good and tight on there. And when I've made, I've made a sock gnome before for St. Patrick's Day, I used all socks. This one is gonna be a little different as I am going to use that cute little bee skirt from the toy department at Dollar Tree to make the hat. So I have glued that on his eye area. And then I have that excess sock there at the top. So I'm just gonna grab the floral wire again and tie that off as well. I like the floral wire, it's really easy to work with and um, it really um, holds the structure of the gnome. Good. So I'm just wrapping that around and tying it and gluing down a piece that was just a little bit loose. And there is our gnome body. Okay, so I want to start working on the hat. Um, this skirt from the Dollar Tree, I had to go to more than one Dollar Tree to get the little headband and the skirt. Definitely couldn't find them at the same store. Um, oh, nope, first I'm gonna do the beard. So I got this microfiber uh, mop head from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna just cut off a good amount for a beard. Um, the gnome I made before, I made with the white yarn from the Dollar Tree and I just made tassels and glued that on and I really liked how that looked. But I'd heard that you could make gnome beards out of these little mop heads. So I thought I would give it a go. And the only thing I'm hating here is see how much like the fibers are coming out. Like the gnome really sheds. You can see that on the black sock there. The little white strings really want to come out. So I am just gluing that on one side and then hot gluing it on the other side and giving our gnome a nice big fluffy beard. 
And see the shedding? I think I prefer the yarn method, but this definitely gave it um, a different look. So I like it. it. It turned out really cute. Okay, so now the hat. So I have the skirt. I'm just going to basically use her fabric. So I'm just going to cut it down one side. And it has this yellow toll in it that I don't really need for anything. And so I am just going to try to cut that toll out just to get it out of my way. And I'm leaving the waistline of the skirt there. It actually has elastic in um, the waist. And I'm going to try to use that to hold that onto my gnome's head. So like wrapping it around where the waist would go around where his eyes are. And I have a little bit too much fabric. So I just cut off a little bit. And then I am trying to find the elastic on the sides so that I can um, wrap this around his head. And I'm kind of seeing if I have enough fabric to go around. And I actually lost um, the side there on the left. The elastic like went in. So I'm just going to have to give it a little bit of a trim to try to grab my elastic back in there. Then I'm just gonna take the elastic wrap it around the gnome head and give it a good tie to hold it on. Now normally I would use a sock like upside down and just pull the sock on over his head. And so I'm kind of just doing that with this bee fabric. I liked this bee fabric. I thought it would turn out really cute for this project. And I'm not going to go crazy or sew it or anything. I am just going to hot glue this into a hat. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue it down over his eyes. His eyes, little gnomey eyes, are going to be covered by the hat. And I love this hot glue gun. It does go through the batteries, though, pretty quickly when you leave it on. And then instead of, like, sewing that into, like, a hat shape, I am going to do it all with hot glue. So I'm just gluing that down in the back. And then I'm just kind of folding the hat into a shape of a hat here. And I just tuck the, you know, the frayed end under to give it a nice clean appearance and seeing if it's like a good length for a hat. It really is. I didn't really have to cut anything off. So I'm again using those little rubber bands from the Dollar Tree and just putting that at the end to form like a hat shape. Now I'm going to go back in with the hot glue and I'm going to start gluing the seam of the hat together. And that's what you see me doing here. And then I think that I need some stuffing. Oh, I love this new little ladybug vacuum I got for my workspace off Amazon. It works so good to keep things clean. So I have part of the hat is still open. So what I'm gonna do is take some more of that polyfill from the pillow and stuff the hat and see if I like that. So I'm going in with probably way too much stuffing and seeing if I want my hat stuffed and then I'm like, that's way too much, Julie. And then it just wants to stand up like a dunce hat. So I'm like, no, 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 still too much. So I pull out more. And I want it to kind of just like, you know, droop down. Kind of like a Santa hat. And I am just gluing up the hole. And then it doesn't want to stay down. It just kept wanting to pop back up into kind of that weird shape. So then I'm like, okay, I don't want stuffing in this hat. So I just take the rubber band off the end and I'm just taking all the stuffing out. That was a bad idea. And I'm just reattaching the rubber band to the end to form the tip of the hat. And he is really coming together. I have this little pom-pom um, left over from a Target Easter craft, but you can use like any kind of pom-pom or fuzzy, or you can even make your own something cute for the end. And I'm just tying it like that. And then I'm just gonna use hot glue to cover the end of the fabric 
so that you won't see it and it'll give it like a finished appearance. And this gnome is really coming together. Isn't he cute? I think he needs a name. What can we call him? Maybe Buzz? Buzzy? And I am just cutting off some more of that microfiber mop head. And I just want to fill in like the sides of his nose. Give him a little bit more fluff in that mustache and beard. And so I am just going to glue some on each side just to fill it in. And cover up any sock that wants to pick, peek out there. Okay, so now I have this bee headband that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to try to take the antenna off. They're really hard. I ended up just having to cut them off. They were really attached. And I wanna use the antennae for my bee gnome. And I also wanna use the wings to decorate him with. I have them, I might as well go ahead and use them. So here are the two little antenna. They're like yellow pipe cleaners. So if you can't find this, you could always make it with just a yellow pom-pom at the end. And you know, these could actually be black too. So the fabric's kind of thin, so I'm trying to just use the wire from the pop pipe cleaner to poke it through. But I'm not having a lot of luck. So I just grab my X-Acto knife and just cut a little slit in the hat so I can get that antenna through the hat. I just want it peeking out. And then once I get it in there, I'm gonna go down under the hat and I want to make it sturdy. So I don't want it just like all willy nilly. So I am going to pull it through and then poke it into the sock body to kind of give it some structure. And then I am just going to um, glue the hat down so that it all stays in place right there. And that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna cut uh, another slit in the hat and poke the second antenna through. And I just love how this guy turned out. He's so cute. He really has a lot of personality. Okay, so there's my antenna and my hat. So now I want to use the wings. Um, so I'm just gonna cut those off and um, just hot glue those to the back of my gnome. I do the stripes like facing the front, but I could have actually turned it around. You can't really see the gnome on the tear tray from the back, but if you could, the stripes on the back may have looked cute too. So you can see all that fuzz from the beard. Um, I am gluing that wing on with just some more hot glue. And then I am going to glue on the other side. And this guy, Buzz, is almost done. I love making these sock gnomes. I think they're really fun. They are a lot of work, but um, you can definitely make them for any kind of holiday or color scheme. And they have so much personality. So I'm just messing with the little dude's hat, trying to figure out how I like it and um, what, how I want it to sit. And I kind of like it like that, tucked back with the little antenna sticking out. And I want him to hold something. So, oh my goodness, I'm glad this is cut off. Here I am being Sid. You remember from Toy Story? <laughs> Cutting the arms off this poor baby doll like some kind of a monster. <laughs> These arms I thought would be perfect for the gnome. I want him to hold something. I don't always, you know, give my gnomes arms, but this guy, I wanted him to hold that little honey dipper that I was able to pick up from Amazon. I got a three pack of them. They were pretty inexpensive. I will post a link to those and I want him to hold that. So I just cut the arms off that baby doll. It was a pretty large baby doll, but the arms were perfect. Perfect size, perfect color. 
So I am just hot gluing those onto the side where arms would be on Buzz. Oh, there's my head. Girl, you need to like do your roots. Okay, so this arm wanted to fight me a little bit. So that's why my head is blocking the whole shot. I'm trying to see what I'm doing. And I want the arm to be on there good. And these little pink things protect my fingers, but that hot glue is hot, so. Sometimes when you're using a lot of glue like that, it's better just to use something else, like a pair of scissors or something. And he has arms. So cute. Okay, so the next step is, oh, I want to cover the area that I just attached his arms. And so this gnome is gonna be super furry and he's gonna have a beard that goes over his shoulders. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just covering up that rough seam and the glue with a little bit more beard. When all else fails, give the gnome more beard. <laughs> all mistakes can be forgiven. <laughs> okay, so I like it. Now it's time to give him his little honey dipper and I just want him to hold it. And so you guessed it, hot glue. I'm just gonna hot glue it into his little hand. And it's small, it's lightweight. I don't think he's gonna have any trouble holding that up. And there he is. I'm just kind of playing with his hat. I know where I like it. I don't know why I'm even messing with them. And trying to pick out like all these loose little fibers that wants to shed from his super shaggy beard. <laughs> He's really coming together. Okay, his hat is super shiny. And so um, this is my idea. I'm just soaking it with um, just starch. And I think that's gonna make it dry like more of a matte color. I don't want it to be super shiny, that cheap satiny fabric from the Dollar Tree. And so that's all I did. And I'm just kind of um, going over that with a paper towel, making sure it's good and wet with the starch. And I didn't really like how you could see the stitching on the base of his hat, so I used the rest of that black sock that I had and just cut off the elastic band around the top of the hat. And I'm just pulling that down kind of like a um, stocking hat. And it did want to unravel a little bit and I am just kind of getting it on there where I like. And then I am going to glue that on. And I decided his beard is like maybe a little um, too much. So I'm just gonna give him a quick barber treatment and give him a little trim to give that beard a little bit more shape and you can kind of see the beard that the gnome actually has a body underneath there <laughs> underneath all that fluffy beard and I don't really want him to shed so I'm just kind of tidying that beard up as much as I can and in the end, I do like how it turned out. It is definitely a cute little beard for him. I'm just gluing that hat in place. It was a little frayed from the fibers, but it turned out pretty good. And it made him look a little bit more finished. He's done. Here's Buzz, the bee gnome. Okay, up next, I got this at the Dollar Tree. It is one of those wax um, melt warmers, and it has some bees on the side of it. It's a perfect color that I wanna use for my tear tray. So this is just a black paint pen from Target. Um, it just came in a package. I got them on clearance or recently, their craft department. And if you turn the tip around, it gives you a finer brush. 
So that is what you saw me doing. And then this is kind of like a raised bee pattern on there. It's not real obvious though. So I am just going around and drawing around the outlines of it, filling in the wings a little bit, and then I'm just gonna give it a couple of stripes. And I don't have a very steady hand for this, but it was actually pretty simple and pretty forgiving. So I'm just going over it with my heat gun and getting him dry. And there are two bees on this little wax melt. And I love the color of this. The color scheme I wanna use for this tear tray is this color of yellow and then black and white. So this will give me the yellow and the black with adding the little details to the bee. And it makes it really stand out that there is a bumblebee on there. When before it was kind of, you really had to look at it to notice the little bees on the side of it. And not too bad. Okay, so just giving that a quick dry. And that is all there is to that project going to be super easy. I'm of course trying to touch up a few areas that I didn't like and it's good enough Julie. So I am going to just turn that tip back over, place it back in there. Tweezers are really good for that so you don't get you know the paint all over your hand. And I'm just going to pop a candle in that and that is ready to go. Okay these are toy bees that I got at the Dollar Tree and I don't want them to look so much like toys. I want them to look a little bit more realistic. The first step is I am going to go in and paint these guys all over with this, it's called Maze Waverly chalk paint that I picked up at Walmart. And I am, I just got a little jar of it, but I'm gonna kind of use it for a lot of projects on this tray because I want them all to kind of be the same shade of yellow. And I kind of like this color a little bit more than that orangey color that he was. And so I am just going all over his whole body and covering him with chalk paint. I love chalk paint. Chalk paint will stick to about anything and it dries really nicely and quickly. And so I am just going over everywhere that was yellow before and giving him a good coating just holding him by the wings to try to keep the wings out of the yellow paint the best I can. I tried to pop them off, but they were kind of on there. So here I am just trying to wipe the paint off to see if the stripes will show through, but it actually wiped all the yellow paint off the tail. So that didn't work. So I just repainted what I just wiped off. And B number one is yellow. All right, so I'm gonna go in and do the same exact thing here with B number two. And just give him a quick all over with one coat of this maize chalk paint. And I'm kind of just doing um, the same paint job that you know the Dollar Tree did yellow with black stripes. But I want them to look more interesting for my tear tray. I don't want it to be obvious that they are toys. And I am just giving it a quick dry with my heat gun. The combination of the chalk paint and the heat gun, like you can work fairly fast because you don't have to wait for things to dry. Okay, so then I'm like, he needs black stripes. So I'm gonna use that same black paint pen again that I just used on the wax warmer. And I am going to color his stripes back on. And you can see where they would be with the black paint pen. And then this is where I'm like, I don't know if that is really what a bee looks like. So I go have a conversation with my son. 
who actually shows me what a honeybee looks like. We got some scientists in this family. And he told me that the, the bee actually has like a brown fur on its body and on its head and on its legs. So I'm gonna try to get that effect with this Waverly Antique Wax from Walmart. And there is a texture um, on the toy bee that looks like fur, but you couldn't really see it because um, it was all one color. And so I am just going in with a dry brush and going over its body, its head, and all of its legs to give it that little fuzzy texture that a bee really would have. And I think that um, it turned out pretty good. The like tail part of the bee does not have that brown fuzz on it. So that's why I'm only doing the body and the head and the legs. And I think they turned out really nicely. And then I'm like, well, the black stripes would not just be on the top of the bee. They would go all the way around. So of course we're being extra here and carrying those black stripes all the way around its tail using um, that black paint pen. And this definitely makes it look like a real bee, a lot more than the way that the Dollar Tree had it painted before. So I am gonna go in and do the same exact thing on my second bee. Dry brush that antique wax on its body and its head and all of its legs and on the underside there to make him look furry. And it was such a simple step, but it really brought out a lot of texture and depth on it. It made it look way more um, high end. So I forgot to color its eyes back in. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm just using my black paint pen and coloring the little eye spots back onto the bee. And then I'm gonna give um, bee number two here back his stripes. He has three stripes and then I'm gonna color in the bottom of his tail. And then just like the other one, I'm gonna go ahead and bring those stripes all the way around. It's tail to make him more finished. And I'm just touching up its eyes a little bit more. And then I decide the wings are clear and they really shouldn't be clear. They should be like um, more like of a, a tan. So I'm gonna use that same antique wax and just going on the underside of the wings to make them look more realistic. I guess it's not gonna look super realistic because it's kind of large for a bee, right? But they're done, two bees, okay. This project is so simple and I lost some footage. So what this is, is just a pot, a yellow pot with this white with blue spots from the Dollar Tree. And I am just using this fingernail polish remover. And a lot of Dollar Tree projects, you can use this. It takes paint off really easily. And this project is really as simple as that. I am just gonna take off the blue spots with the fingernail polish remover and that's gonna leave me with a yellow and white pot. It's the exactly right color that I wanted. And I think that's really all it needs. So can't beat that simplicity, right? Isn't that cute? Okay. So this is some bee nesting boxes that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I actually want to use this smaller box. I really liked the honeycomb shape of it, and but I want it to be um, this maize color of yellow. So I am gonna give it a paint job with this chalk paint. And I'm going to use this. Um, my tear tray is going to be on my kitchen table. So I want it to be functional. So I'm gonna use this to hold my salt and pepper shakers. And um, I think it's gonna be the perfect size for that. And I did like the lid um, 
I didn't really have any use for the rest of those boxes on um, the rest of the tear trays. So the, probably the rest of that is just going to go in my stash. So I gave it one good coat, pretty thin, of the chalk paint all around and inside and then gave it a quick dry with my heat gun and now I'm going in with another coat. That pink color with the little bees was actually a lot to color. Um, the inside seemed to color a lot better because it was solid inside and so I am basically just trying to cover up any area I see that is pink that is trying to shine through. And I am going to give that a quick dry. And I think it took three coats of chalk paint to cover the patterns on the side and give it that uniform yellow color. So here's my third coat. I'm going in and just covering anything I see that kind of sneaks through. The bottom like just happens to already be that like same color. But I'm going to have this sitting down in my tear tray holding my salt and pepper shaker. So I think that it is going to be just fine. And I'm just giving the inside a good coat and around the edges. And I am going to do a test for you guys. This is the Black Cricut vinyl from the Dollar Tree. And it's the first time I'm using it. It's only a dollar a roll. So we are going to give it a try for this um, honeycomb holder. So I'm just using my rotary cutter. I'm cutting off a couple inches of the black vinyl from the Dollar Tree. And I am going to cut out some words and pictures that I um, designed on Canva to put on the little sides of my little, what is it, a hexagon? And I'm also going to try out the transfer paper from the Dollar Tree as well. It is this plasticky like transfer paper with the grid on it. And I'm just cutting out a piece to use for that. I am eyeing my box to make sure that it is getting dry. And here we go. Let's see how it weeds. Dollar Tree Vinyl. That came off pretty good. And here's my bee. Wants to stick a little bit, so I'm just using my tool to make sure that everything is stuck down and weeding it. It felt like kind of a cheaper, thicker vinyl, but it weeded surprisingly well. Look at that. Those Ray Dunn letters are not the easiest to weed and stay down. So this part, I had a little detail inside the honeycomb that actually weeded out with the inside parts. So that was not real specific. Um, and then I am just weeding my letters and my B. And here is the transfer paper from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put that over my vinyl, peel it off upside down, and scrape it with my little Cricut scraper so it is attached to my transfer tape. And then I am going to cut it apart into the pieces that I need. There are six sides, so I thought three words and three pictures. So here goes. Test number one, and it is not working well. This transfer tape does not work well on paper surface for sure. It was fighting me, and look, it took off like a bunch of paint. So I'm like, okay, well, I can't go back now. I've already got the transfer paper attached to the vinyl, so let me just try not to scrape it and see if I can not do as much damage on this one but it was still fighting me. It was too sticky. Maybe if it was glass or a hard surface, it might work, but I was not a fan of this transfer paper, and I can't really tell if the vinyl is good or not because I'm having so much trouble with the transfer tape that I'm just trying, trying, trying to get that vinyl stuck and get 
the transfer paper off and I finally had to rip the bottom of my letter off and I'm trying to go back in and save it. It was like the bottom of one of my E's that was just so attached to the transfer tape that it wouldn't let go. And I'm trying to reattach it here, but I just give up and get a black Sharpie and say, to heck with it. Here's the bottom of the E. Okay. So my third word, now I'm scared because I know I don't like this transfer tape and this project. Definitely not a good fit. And so I'm trying with my fingers just to smooth the words on and get that off with as little casualties as I can. Here is my B. And it is so sticky. Like it went around the side there and it tried to take off one of my letters. And here I'm just trying to get it started. I'm trying to get it off the transfer tape. It is so stuck. If I would have taken this transfer paper and like put it like on a cotton t-shirt a couple of times before I applied it to the vinyl, I probably would have had a lot more luck. Little did I know how sticky it is. So here is just a little honey pot and a honey stick. And I am attaching that. And this one caused me the most grief, this honeycomb. It was a delicate pattern and it was really stuck to the transfer tape. And when I tried to like separate it, it was kind of distorting the shape of the vinyl. And, oh, this was not a good test. And again, I can't tell if it's the vinyl. I think it's mostly the transfer tape that just did not work with this application. So I will not be using that kind of transfer tape again in a, a paper or cardboard project like this, for sure. I finally got it off, and then I'm just trying to repair my damage. I'm just trying to avoid having to recut that again. And pretty good. I get my honeycomb on there pretty good. And it's done. So that's for my salt and pepper shaker for my tear tray. And the next stop is I want to make a honey pot. I got this little pot at the Dollar Tree. It had a lid on it. I just popped the lid off. And I am going to use that and my little honey dipper that I got on Amazon to try to make a little honey pot. So I was trying to think of something that was the color of honey that would not be sticky, um, something that smelled nice. And then I was looking at my Goo Gone and I was like, you know, Goo Gone is like the color of honey. And so that is what I'm going to use in my little honey pot. And I probably should have used it to help me get that tag off, huh? <laughs> so got the tag off my little honey pot and I am just going to dump a tiny bit of the Goo Gone in there for the color and make it look like it has honey. And it smells like oranges, so that's nice too. And then I'm just gonna put my little honey dipper in there and there is my honey pot. Easy peasy. Okay, the next project is one of these little tile signs from the Dollar Tree. This was a spring wind, it can be anything. And I'm wondering, you know, the fingernail polish remover and the paint, whether I can get that off. And so I give it a good try and no luck. So I'm like, that's okay. I'll just use the back. The back is like pure white. Then I'm trying to decide, do I want the tile to be like on the front of the frame or the back of the frame? And I kind of decide I want the frame to be on the front to make it kind of look like a reverse canvas. There was a little bit of glue along the edges, but that's going to be covered by being put back in the frame. So I was just trying to clean it up there a little bit. And then I am going to paint the frame with this maize chalk paint again. And this is a really light color of wood on this one and it took the yellow paint really well. So I am just gonna go on the outside, the front and the inside of the frame with one coat of the maize chalk paint. And that is good for that project. See, I told you we're gonna be using that paint a lot. Uh -huh. 
And I'm just going in with my heat gun and giving it a good dry. And there was just like one little tiny spot there on the inside where I did not get any paint. And so I'm just gonna go in there and fix that little tiny spot. But one coat was definitely enough coverage for that. And the frame is done. And then I want to use the white tile for the inside and I am gonna make a cute little graphic to make a little sign for my tear tray. So here I am just measuring the tile so I can put that size square in my Cricut design space and come up with something for the sign here. And I think that I'm really not, I don't really need to paint the surface of the sign. I think it's pretty good the way that it is. So test number two on the Dollar Tree Cricut vinyl. We will see <laughs> if it was the transfer tape or if it was the vinyl. So I'm putting that on my Cricut mat and giving it a good bray. And then putting that in my Cricut. I have the um, Explore Air 2 and cutting out I'm gonna have it say, um, be kind. And instead of be, it's gonna have like a picture of the bee. So here is the weeding. And it actually weeded um, like a champ. And then I also have the word buzz there. That is going to be for a future project, you will see. And while I was going ahead and cutting that vinyl out, I um, just wanted to go ahead and do it then. Now this transfer tape is the papery kind of transfer tape. I get this on Amazon and I love it. It's so easy to work with and it's not super sticky and I will not have the problems I hope that I had with that last Cricut project. So it transferred great to my transfer paper and I am just going to kind of try to center it. I'm gonna kind of tear some of that off so that I can center that onto my tile and there we go be kind and then all i'm going to do is take some hot glue here and reattach the tile to the sign like that isn't that cute i love how that turned out and I just got a little bit of hot glue on the inside. So I'm just trying to try to get that off. It's kind of hard to remove extra hot glue when um, it is still hot. So it's kind of best to just wait until it cools off and try to clean that up just a little bit. But I really love how this sign turned out. It's so simple. Then I realized that the um, back of the sign was actually gonna be visible because my tear tray is round. And so I'm just using some white chalk paint to cover up that design on the back. If it wasn't visible, I would have totally just left it. It was a cute sign and it could have been like a two-sided sign. But since it was visible, I'm just gonna give it a good coat of the chalk paint and dry it with my heat gun. Okay, next project. I got this at Dollar General, not Dollar Tree, and for $3, and I love the colors of it. It's perfect colors. It has a little ceramic tag on there, and that's where I'm gonna use that buzzword that I cut off and the skinny um, font, and I'm just gonna attach that to the other side of the tag, and that is all there is to this B project, easy peasy, right? So cute. Okay, so I also got this at Dollar General. It is a hanging bell, um, and I liked the little B. I kind of liked his colors more than the one that I got at um, the Dollar Tree, which was more of an orange color. 
So I'm just using my pliers here to um, take the chain off and the bell. And I don't really like that he has a hole there in his wing. So I'm just gonna use some Cricut vinyl and um, try to patch that hole. I didn't really wanna use spackle there because it's so thin, I didn't think it was really gonna work. And then his wings are a little blue. So I'm just gonna go over with that white chalk paint and repaint his wings white. And I'm trying to cover up that um, little patch job I did there on his wing and give him a good coat. Here the smile was a little chipped on the paint so I am just going in and touching up his smile. And I'm not really going to add a stand or anything to him. I'm just gonna kind of put him, um, just lean him in my tray. I think he'll stand up okay. He's made out of metal. Then when you start like painting this, you realize, you know, the Dollar General paint job's not great. So I'm going in with a second coat there on the wings and trying to hide that vinyl in there and giving him a good touch up. And I didn't really like, you can see the way he's painted, like his stripes don't go all the way. They go most of the way across his body. So I am gonna go in there and give him a little bit of a makeover while I'm painting him. So here I'm just giving the wings a good dry. And I'm gonna use that black paint pen again that I got at Target. And I am going to just go over his stripes and make his stripes go all the way along his body. And just kind of clean the paint job up a little bit. Make him look a little extra special. And he's got two stripes and then he's just got the bottom of his tail here. And okay, next up. Um, so functionality, I wanted something to hold my napkins and I got this adorable little bee bucket at Dollar Tree, but it was super, super shiny. So here I am trying to take the sheen away. I'm just using, um, that is a matte acrylic spray paint and it's totally an experiment that I thought if I paint all over, I can make him look less glossy and it's actually working to my surprise. And I could actually see a little shiny part so I could see where I missed it some. And I gave it another coat there and it gave it a really nice finish. Just made it look um, a little bit um, more high end than it did before. And there we go, easy peasy. Okay, so these are the little chunky wood rings from the Dollar Tree and I am just gonna use them for risers. I have a metal finish tear tray and so I'm just gonna use this um, chalk paint in um, Elephant, just so it'll kind of match in with the metal tray. And um, I'm thinking a couple of the things like on the second shelf are gonna need to be a little taller so that you can appreciate them. And so I am just making a couple risers for my tear tray. And it was unfinished wood, so one coat. It's gonna be good and I'm gonna give it a quick dry here. And that project's done. Okay, so I am going to make, I got this little pot at the um, Dollar Tree and I thought it kind of looked like a honey pot. So I am just going all over with that same maize chalk paint and drying in between coats. It took a lot of coats to give it the kind of finish that I was going for. I wanted it to look more like a pottery piece and the chalk paint gave it that nice texture, but it took, I think I'm, I've lost count here, how many coats of paint it took to get this thing covered. But there we go. And I really like the shape of that. And I think painting it that maize color of yellow really brought that out. It kind of reminded me of a Winnie the Pooh honey pot. And I'm gonna use that as a little planter. I got some um, yellow flowers from the Dollar Tree and that's what's gonna go inside. So it had a wire um, along the top that I took off there at the beginning of the project. 
And these are just the dahlias. And I am going to go in and cut those off so that I can arrange those in my little flower pot. And I'm just going to use my floral scissors from the Dollar Tree. And I think I end up using um, all but one in this little flower pot. I thought it would be nice to bring in some yellow flowers. It's going to fit my color scheme. And it's going to kind of go with the bee theme because bees like flowers. They pollinate. And so when I painted that pot, I did not go all the way up. You can see I kind of left it clear glass along the top. And you'll see I'm going to go in with a little finishing touch there in a second, but I am just trying to find a piece of floral foam that will fit inside my little pot. And I just break off a chunk and put it in there. I love this foam from the Dollar Tree. It's really fine. It's really easy to work with. And it does a great job. So I'm just going to go in and place my flowers. I'm going to put one in all four corners there and one in the middle to make it like super full. And it turns out, it turns out pretty cool. It's just the right height I need, I think for the second shelf in my tear tray, maybe the bottom. And it gives it just another element. So here's my little final detail. I'm gonna go in with this Buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree and nothing fancy. I am just gonna tie a knot and cut the ribbon off, give it little pointy edges. And I don't think it really needs a bow. I think it just needs a little bit of color. And so that's my yellow, black and white theme for my tear tray. Well, this project is easy. I got this candle at the Dollar Tree and I don't have to do anything to it. It kind of reminds me of honey. Okay, next project is this little white ceramic sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. I really like the size of this and the simplicity and you could do pretty much anything with it, but I thought I would attach this cute little bee from this decal that I got at the Dollar Tree to it. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do here. And you could like, you know, draw on there with a paint pen. You could do like a Cricut message. You could do a message like stickers. You could do so much with this little sign. And the decal is gonna make it like really easy to reuse because I can just take that off and reuse it for something else. Here I'm thinking I want some of those little, the little bee lines <laughs> when a bee is flying. So I just cut off a piece of that and I'm kind of seeing how it's gonna fit. And I'm gonna give that a try. And I figure if I don't like it, I can always just take it back off. And so there's the little dotted lines. And I get it on there and then I'm like, I don't, I don't think it really needed that. And you can kind of see the two different pieces of decal. So I'm like, nah, the bee's good enough. Keep it simple. It wasn't quite tall enough, I don't think, to be able to be seen out of my tear tray. So here I am just gluing two of the Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree together to make a small stand for the sign. And then I'm gonna glue that on with hot glue. Basically, I just made a little riser just for this little sign. And I don't really like how you can see the natural wood there that might be visible. And so I'm going to use um, some of this Waverly um, chalk paint in white and just give it a quick coat of paint so it kind of matches in with the sign, but makes it a little bit taller. Whenever you have a tear tray with sides, you want to be able to see the things. Like if the tear tray didn't have sides, it would have probably been perfect without the riser. Okay. Next step is I am going to do a bead, would be garland for my bead tear tray. And I am using these long 
um, I guess they're like the hot dog roasters um, skewers from Dollar Tree and they're nice and wide for these beads. So I got these wood beads off Amazon. Um, there's all different sizes and I will post a link to those below. They are great. This is like my third, I think, um, garland that I've made out of them and I still have lots left. And so I am going to do five in this maze and chalk paint. And I kind of like this method better than the last method I tried. The last method I tried was a bowl with paint and water and just kind of mixed the balls around in there. But the, what I noticed is a lot of paint got inside the ball and then like leaked out and got on the rest of the garland when I went to put it together. And so I like how this turned out. I think I like this method better with the little skewers. So now I'm going to paint these five. A different color I'm just gonna do black I have some black acrylic paint and with the black you really have to kind of really cover it all or it's gonna be really noticeable and so I'm thinking with this would be garland I'll have the yellow beads the natural beads and the black beads and then um, one end of it I'm gonna use that little honey dipper I have three of them and then the other end, I am going to use that little black graduation tassel that you see there. And that's like a little keychain. I thought it would be fun um, to have a black tassel on the end. And um, usually I just make it with the jute twine. But that will save me a step and I think that it will turn out just fine. So I am just going to take some pliers and pull off the 2021. And this came from the Dollar Tree and the little hook on there. And it's a keychain, so I'm just going to kind of open that up so I'll be able to get the tassel off of that. And there's my tassel. Okay, so this is just the jute twine from the Dollar Tree. And I am just tying that to my little honey dipper. And I don't really have my hot glue gun on at this point. And so I'm like, how can I get this on here and kind of dangle it? So I'm just wrapping that jute twine around the stem of it and cutting off a long piece of twine. Always go longer, can't go shorter. <laughs> and then I'm just going to put my needle on there that I'm going to use to thread. It's just a giant needle I have. And go under that twine and pull it through and pull it tight. And it is attached. Okay, it's time to string this garland. I'm just, I kind of just make my pattern as I go. So I'm thinking like two of the natural, one of the black, one of the yellow, and then just repeat. I'm not going to do any of the bigger sizes, I don't think, on this. And I love doing this part. I think this part is so much fun. You just kind of have to remember your pattern. And string it on and I'm gonna go until I run out of colors. I usually paint too many so I did good this time only doing five of each color and there's my garland and now I just want to um, get that keychain off and string my tassel on and then I am just going to tie that off And I love making these um, wood bead garlands. I, they're so much fun, and I think they give such a great effect on a tear tray. And I'm just going to cut that off and push my little extra piece back inside that bead with my needle. And then I didn't really like the gold on the tassel. I thought that looked really graduation-y. So I am just going to take some more of that tw twine and wrap that around to cover up that little gold clasp and make it look a little bit more intentional and then I'm just going to reattach my needle and do what I did on the other end for the honey dipper and just go under with my needle and pull it through to tie that off and then just cut it off as close as I can and we have a bead garland. Okay, everything's made. Everything's ready to go. My tear tray is empty. And let's do this thing. Okay, we're going to start at the top. So here is our 
B step. And it fits on there perfectly now that we gave it a little rise. And I'm just gonna have that on the top. And then I kinda wanna do my wood bead girling on the top. I always struggle with how I want it, but then I'm like, what if I like have the honey dipper come through the handle of the skep and it can kind of hang there and then you can kind of see it going down the back of the skep. So that kind of gives some interest to the back of the skep. Then I'm gonna take one of our super realistic bees and attach that to the top with just putting one of his legs through the handle and he stays on there pretty good. And then just sitting another one on the side. And then here is the bee that we made that was from the little bell. And I'm just gonna lean that up against the back just to give the back some interest as well. And that is it for the top shelf. I think that's good. And we are ready to decorate the next shelf of the tear tray. And here is our little honey pot. Don't tell anybody, it's not really honey. <laughs> and it's a little short, so I'm gonna use one of those risers that we made. And sit that up on the riser so that you can see the honey pot a little bit better. I was just thinking when I was turning this around, it'd be really good to attach like a Lazy Susan to the bottom of this, especially since it's like a functional piece in the, in, on the table. And then um, I'm going to put the little white sign with the B on it. And here's our pot that we just took the blue spots of, off of and kind of arrange those. This shelf's a little shorter. Um, so I'm kind of using some of my shorter things on this and trying to break up the yellows and the whites. And here is the little wax warmer. I just popped a little candle inside and with the little bees that we painted on the side of that and then I'm going to do the picture up on a riser as well the little bee kind and that's all there is to shelf number two of the bee tear tray looks good okay now it's time to go down <laughs> all the way down to the bottom of this and this is gonna have a lot of the functional products that I want on the table, like the salt and pepper holder that I made, the napkin holder that I made, and the larger items. Okay, so the first thing we are going to add is the napkin holder. Okay, so you, as you can see, it's not shiny. That matte um, acrylic really worked and it's just gonna hold some napkins for the table. And here is the little buzz vase that was so easy from Dollar General. And all we had to do was that was add the word buzz to the tag. And here is our little honeycomb shaped salt and pepper shaker with a little bit of paint damage from bad transfer tape, but it's okay and spin this baby around and on the back here we're going to do this candle that i didn't have to do anything to on that side and here is our little honey pot flowers they fit in there perfectly i'm really glad we attached the ribbon and there's buzz the star of the show he is our little bee gnome he's super fluffy and i just love how he turned out so cute. So, what do you guys think? I think we've done it. We have got a B tiered tray, and here is the final product. Everyone in the house was super excited to see it. It's so cute. It's good for spring, it's good for summer. Who doesn't like a good honeybee decoration? And I really like the color scheme, the yellow, the blacks, and the white. And when I'm doing a tear tray, I try to make it look interesting from all four sides. 
especially when it's gonna sit on a table like this and you're gonna be able to see every side. And then again, I want this one to be functional, hence the napkins and the salt and pepper shaker. So every side here has a little different detail. It's all B, kind of arranged that. I'm glad I made a small stand for that. It made it stand up good. And this really shows off the bead garland. And then there's our little metal bee peeking out. And I did the wood, the wood garland on top to kind of fill in the empty space. And there's our honey pot and our buzz vase. And our salt and pepper shaker. So there's a little honey, there's a little bee on every side. Oh, I just love it. What do you guys think? I think it turned out really nice. Um, I used all items from the Dollar Tree and Dollar General. I don't think I had, the wood beads came from Amazon and the little honey dippers came from Amazon. And this is the final product. What do you guys think? Oh, I love it.